Welcome to the book review of Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. Today we're starting book three, Christian Behavior, and chapter one, the three parts of morality. And today we're going to cover the first one, the three parts of morality. And a lot of times people will say that they have an idea of God as the sort of person who is always snooping around to see if anyone is enjoying himself or herself too much and then trying to stop it. There are so many different rules and regulation requirements. Thinking of God makes a lot of people uncomfortable. So let's unpack what C.S. Lewis talked about this. Moral rules are directions for running the human machine. According to C.S. Lewis, we need to have this direction called moral rules. Because every moral rule is there to prevent a breakdown or a strain or a friction in the running of that machine. The human machine needs some kind of directions, instruction. And that's why these rules at first seem to be constantly interfering with our natural inclinations. A lot of times we learn something new and we want to do a certain way, but instructors teachers or professionals tell us what to do and what not to do. For example, there's a machinery that we have to operate. So when you first learn how to use it, they're going to say most likely, no, don't do it like that. Even though we have some inclination of using the machine based on our observations and previous experiences, we have to learn in the beginning, which is usually different from our natural tendency. So we have to learn how to live as a human being aside from our natural instincts. And C.S. Lewis pointed out a difference between moral rules and ideals. So when somebody says that a certain house is his ideal, he does not mean or he cannot mean that everyone else should have the same ideal. Just because somebody has an idea about ideal house or a person doesn't mean everyone else would agree with that person. That's a very reasonable conclusion. So moral ideal or perfection is not a personal preference. If it is, then other people do not need to share it. So ideals are not really a personal preference. You cannot say that, even though we use this terminology all the time, in real sense, it's not about personal preference or personal taste. So speaking of morality, a lot of times back in the 60s, the modern people back then and today are almost always thinking about the fair play and harmony between countries, individuals, different classes in the society. They're saying it's got to be fair and we have to have this harmonious society or a relationship between different entities. And we often hear from those people saying it can't be wrong because it doesn't do anyone else any harm. So whatever I do, my individual right to enjoy my life, as long as I do not harm anyone, it's okay. Their conclusion, the world should leave them alone. But there are at least two more aspects to consider for morality, according to C.S. Lewis. So the first part was fair play and harmony with others. That was number one. But that talk of first part will be merely moonshine unless we realize that the courage and unselfishness of individuals will make any system work properly. So that idea of number one, where we cannot accomplish that goal unless Every individual has the same mindset. So that's number two. And C.S. Lewis stated that you cannot make people good by law. And without good people, you cannot have a good society. So we talk about gun control in today's world. There's an argument between two different opinions. They all have good points. We need to have a good law in place, which is perfectly fine. We need to have that. The other argument is that regardless of what kind of law we have, if an individual has a bad intention, something will happen, not because of gun itself, but because of that person who has this bad intention about using it. So this second point is 
very important to understand. Individuals have to have a courage and unselfishness to fulfill that requirement. So according to C.S. Lewis, we have three parts of morality. The first one we just discussed was harmony with others. The second part was individuals' courage and unselfishness. The third one is understanding our relationship with the Creator. He talked about this one from book one and book two. The Creator is the landlord according to his analogy, and we are the tenants. So all tenants must understand landlord's expectations, such as moral rules, to be on the same page. Otherwise, individuals will have their own standard to follow, their own morality to live by. And C.S. Lewis pointed out that usually our disagreements begin with the second individual level and become more serious with the third because why do we have to follow any standard? I have my own rules and standard to follow for my own life. So it is dealing with the third that the main differences between Christian and non-Christian morality come out. That is so true because postmodernistic views and other philosophical approach to our lives is very individualistic and we are basically the center of the universe and I make my own decision. Nobody can tell me what to do or what not to do. Huge gap between that and Christian value. So C.S. Lewis said this, for the rest of this book, I will assume the Christian point of view and look at the whole picture as it will be if Christianity is true. To get to this point, I suggest you to review book one and book two. We have 10 review videos to come to this conclusion. And if you have any question, let me know about those previous videos as well. And that's it for today. So if you have any particular questions about this chapter, please leave them under the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in Book 3, Chapter 2, The Cardinal Virtues.